it's my pleasure to introduce to you uh, somebody who's really close to my heart, uh, really, really lovely elder from the Tsleil-Waututh Nation, uh, Ta'a, Amy George. Are you around, Ta'a? Somewhere? While she's coming, I'll tell you a little bit about Amy George. Have you all seen those t-shirts that say, Warrior Up, Ta'a said? Who here's seen it? A few of you? Okay, well, she'll tell you more about it. Oh, thank you. Here's the t-shirt. Amy George is uh, the daughter of Chief Dan George. She's the mother of Reuben George, and she's just a fantastic human being all by herself. Um, Amy, uh, or Halia, or Ta'a, which means grandmother, uh, has been a really, really big part of bringing together First Nations and non-native people in her community, and has really been a leader on the campaign around Kinder Morgan. She's had a huge impact on my life, and she's here to do a traditional greeting for you all today. I'm really touched that you could be with us here today, Ta'a. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. Am I being heard? Okay. <laughs> I want to welcome you all to our territory, our traditional territory. We're the Tisleawut people. We're called the people of the inlet According to the archaeologist who did a study, our clam bads date back 30,000 years. We've been on that inlet. <laughs> During that time that my people have lived in that area, we could drink water out of the creeks. Now they're so polluted, we can't even go stand in it. We took, when the tide would go out, dinner was set. There was clean water. There was clean air. There was no endangered species. There was no endangered plants. We always had limited population and if we took a life, we used all of it. My dad shot a deer, he'd use every part of that deer, the hoofs for noisemakers, the hides. I ask him, and what happens in the winter when you're moccasins get wet he said we go to the seal but they'd use everything where the seal it would keep their feet dry to see these tankers out here yeah, um, there's so many of them out there right now it's just so it just hurts my heart this whole thing this during contact, we got wiped out to 13 people. There were only 13 to slay what two people. And our, our nation is getting built up again. And as far back as I could remember, when, they said, when my dad said they were going to put a dredge into this inlet and make the world's biggest seaport, and my dad said that's the only time I'd ever take up my gun if somebody says we're going to relocate the Indian. And I got very frightened because I was young then. Today I know exactly how he feels. Because I'm a great grandmother now. I'm not living here for me anymore. I'm living for my generations. I'm here for my great grandchildren. I'm not saying I want this or I want clean water. I want this or that. My granddaughter said it to me best. She said, I want my baby to enjoy the water the way I did and swim in it and do ceremony in it the way she did when she was growing up. It's been years since we were able to even go into the water. We get rash on our legs and that's to hear these two Texas billionaires, they want to dredge into our inlet. I wonder how they'd feel if I went to their property in Texas and said, I'm going to start digging here and I'm going to plant some things and some flowers and I'm going to set up my house right here. That's how it feels to me. This is my territory. I'm the, I'm, I'm the people of the inlet. <laughs> or if I went anywhere, even if I went here and said, I'm going to build a house right here or go in front of these buildings and say, this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to claim this now. And somebody's living in them buildings. Someone, people are enjoying this park. I go to Kinder Morgan's yard in Texas, I'd be put in the crazy house. 
if I did that on their property, but it's okay for them to do it because they're multi-billionaires. Right on. And not only that, these people on the tar sands, I walked the tar sands. It looks like a nuclear bomb. In fact, it would have been kinder to drop a nuclear bomb on, on Lubicon. During the walk, I saw three, we're walking what used to be forest area and there's, I saw three birds and one was dead on the ground. The people are getting ear infection, eye infection, throat infection and cancer and they're dying. I was taught when I was very little, my dad said, you take a fish out of the water, you killed something. If you cut down a tree, you killed something. If you shoot a deer, you killed something. And these two are able to go into Alberta and put up them tar sands. They're breathing carbon monoxide 24-7. They said, don't bath your baby no longer than two minutes in the water. It's that poison. And then they say to us when we start protesting them, they said the Indians are terrorists. Okay, well, you're a murderer. I saw this real nice quote just this morning. Um, only after the last tree has been cut down, only after the last river has been poisoned, only after the last fish has been caught, only then will you find that money cannot be eaten. That's, right. That's a Cree prophecy. Sometimes when I talk at gatherings such as this, I say sometimes when I'm in my sacred ceremony in the sweat lodge, I say a prayer for Kinder Morgan. I say a prayer for his children because they're, they're going to be a part of this, which is our, definitely our our future. What do you want in your future? What do they want in their future? They couldn't even live long enough to spend the billions that they have and if they bring in them tankers taller than the Vancouver, tallest Vancouver building, they're going to be making a billion. They're almost making a billion a shipload now. They could never live long enough to spend what they already have. Why don't they put their money towards something sensible like solar or wind energy or something? There was a time in our history when the government was saying nobody's dying, we're not killing anybody. There was a time in our history, in our recent history, and where they said, oh, it's not poison, oh, we're not doing bad things. And they put, they were, Kinder Morgan's rich enough to put these commercials on TV where it all looks fine and it's, they're doing wondrous things for us. They're not doing anything for us. Only they're going to benefit and they're going to bring the tankers to California. They're going to refine it. They're helping China because China's giving them the money. So there was a time in our history, five million people were burned and killed and put in ovens. And they still said, it's okay, this is not happening. We're in the same place today. My people in Lubicon, my good friend Melina, when she tries to talk, her cousin, uh, who's only 18, she died. Her mother has cancer, her father has cancer. They haven't drank their water for over 10 years or since that tar sands happened in this, only for those um, 1%, that very, very rich 1%, they're the only ones benefiting from, they're, they're, they're making money on the deaths of our people. <laughs> and the same as in the, when that World War II happened, it's the same here, that, that, that we're getting the news, we're getting commercials on TV that Kingdom Morgan are doing wonderful things for us. 
it's not for us, it's for themselves. When I first started talking, I felt something in my heart when I heard that they were going to dredge 50 feet into my inlet. And I, we had a gathering in our gym way smaller than this one. And a lot of my own um, tribal members, uh, members were there. And I said to them, you know, there's a time when you got to get up off your couch and turn off your remote and turn off your TV games and stand up for something. <laughs> my people that. Now I'm telling all of you, you guys, warrior up for God's sake. I like this gathering because sometimes you'll be sitting at home and you say, oh I'm going to stand by them, or oh, I believe in what they're saying or what they're doing, but right here, right now, there's body presence and I thank you. And I welcome you all here onto my territory. We were called the, the we're called the natives are stopping progress. No, we're not. We're not protesters, we're protectors. We're trying to protect this. I thank you for your ears and I thank you for listening to my words. I, I really, really appreciate it. Like I said, I'm not here for myself anymore. I'm here for my children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, that they'll have a better life than I ever did. Thank you. Thank you.